wow. Did you notice? Know? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, did you notice I was so excited by this morning and being here and you all, I've been grinning like a silly nitwit at all the people who are in the room gathered together for our celebration today and jumped up in the middle of the prelude again, Sarah. <laughs> so excited to be gathered with you all. Thank you for coming out today for our celebration. Uh, it is wonderful to see the meeting house full again, and whether you are joining us online or whether you are here in the room, know that you are welcome. From near or from far, we gather together, friends, to be close to God once again. And yet, whether we are near or far, we know that God dwells with us always. No matter how far we are, we can never be beyond God. So come, 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 come to your rest and come to this time of celebration, this time of joy. Breathe within us in 
sing within us. You move our hearts to perpetual praise through all the parties. Perpetual praise. As we turn to God in prayer, will you join me in a brief moment of silence? Find your seat upon the pew beneath you or the chair on which you sit at home. Feel your feet on the ground and take a deep breath in. Exhaling, remembering that you are chosen by God. Let us turn in prayer. Redeemer, creator God, we come to you today with our own struggles and limitations, yet knowing that each and every one of us are called to a vital role in your ministry here on earth. Increase in us the awareness of your presence, Lord, and the ways that you are calling us to minister in your name. Allow us to more fully see and appreciate the gifts and needs of those around us so that we may more fully be ministers in your world. Open our hearts and our minds so that we may be a community that is welcoming of all, so that we may create a space where all can find a place at your table. In your name we pray, amen. Friends, our holy scriptures tell us that we are created in the image and likeness of God. In this place, we celebrate the mystery of who God is, remembering that our tradition is rich in calling God by many names, heavenly, almighty, creator, spirit, redeemer, sustainer. Because of this great mystery, we invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer in your own tradition and language. In this way, we celebrate the interconnectedness of our lives, whether we come from near or from far. Let us now pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to invite all of the children or the young to come forward for a brief children's message.
Come join me at the chancel. Let's sit together. Come on over, Nikki. How's it going? Good. Yeah, come on up. Come have a seat. Hi. I saw you were so fast. All right. Well, good morning. How are you all? Good? Yeah, good. So, I have a question for you. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, awesome. You made a huge Lego house? And we have a, someone who made a board game? That's amazing. Yes. Oh, well, that's good. At least you have a few left, right? Well, ha do you guys know what the word minister is? Do you know what a minister is? No? no? And you don't know what a minister is? Well, so a minister so a minister is someone who tends to the needs of others. So it's someone who cares for another person. So sometimes you'll hear people like Pastor Nanette or myself referred to as a minister. But did you know that you can be ministers too? What? Yeah. You don't have to go to school. The candles represent the light of God coming into this space in God's I presence with us. Right <laughs> yeah? Well, very good. So, so a minister is someone who cares for someone else, right? Yeah? So do you think your parents and your family members can be ministers? Yeah? Do you think you can be ministers? Yeah, absolutely. So in the Bible, in 1 Peter... Verses 4 and 5, it tells us that, yes, so it tells us that as you come to him, the living stone, chosen by God, you're all chosen by God. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, is that exciting? So chosen by God and precious to him, so you're deeply loved and cared for, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be holy priesthood. Yes, isn't that exciting? Offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So all of you are being called to do amazing works to God. Isn't that awesome? Yeah? So do you know why you're here today? Do you know what's happening after church? Are we having a party? Yeah, we're having a party, a party to celebrate all of the people of the church who minister. So some of them volunteer in our food pantry, and some of them volunteer as teachers of children's school, and some of them go and visit the sick people of the church. That's pretty cool, right? And they're all ministers. And you guys can be ministers too by helping out and just coming to church. That's pretty neat, huh? Yes, it's very nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. All right. Do you want to join me in prayer? Yeah. 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 Um, the big, the oh, okay. Very good. Yeah, cool. So let's pray. Can you pray with me? Let's... Yeah. All right. Dear God, thank you are calling us to be ministers. We are so excited to get to be ministers in your church. Yes, very good. Lord, thank you for our gifts and for our many blessings. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, are you ready to go back? All right, let's go back to our families. Yay! And you can, you can go as fast as you want. Yes, show me, yes.
it's tough to have to follow that, but I'm going to try anyway. She did that on purpose, I know. Uh, I just want to inform you that I changed the solo. Um, instead of what's listed, I'm doing a piece called the Solid Rock. That, that's more fun to play. In the Bible, we're told that one person, we know of one person who names God. Her name is Hagar, a slave, a handmaid. Forgotten, unheard, lost in the desert, Hagar cries out to God. God loves Hagar. God sees Hagar. And Hagar names God El Roy. Today, as we turn to God in prayer, we know that God sees us, that God hears us. Will you turn with me as we cry out and give thanks to a God who sees and hears? Creator, sustainer God, mother, father, friend, we lift up to you our many blessings. Blessings of bountiful harvests, of meals, of good health, of volunteers and ministers who go forward into this world to provide care. We give thanks for musicians and artists who put the joys in the human spirit on display for us to see and hear. We pray and give thanks for your never-ending love and kindness, for your creative spirit that can be seen in young souls, young hearts, and young minds. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing that youth is to us. But Lord, we reach out to you because there are so many hurts and woes in this world. We raise up to you the departed and the sick. Bless them. Love them. We raise up to you the earth. It's in pain 
as wildfires rage, and there's a fire that rages in the Gulf of Mexico. We raise up for you all those who lose their lives to violence, whether it be in conflict between nations or shootings outside of baseball stadiums. We lift up to you all of those who live without the homeless, the hungry, the orphan. Lord, pull them close. Show them love and mercy. God, who sees us, who hears us, but who loves us, guide us and be with us now and always. We ask this in your name forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The second reading comes from the book of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 34, and verses 53 through 56. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, People at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, 
into villages or cities or farms. They laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. Please, would you pray with me? God, you are our beginning and our end. In this moment, as we enter into this time together, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts would be like water and sunlight to the truth that you have planted in our soul, that we might grow to be a blessing to you and to the world around us. Amen. Friends, have you ever had one of those days? Maybe for you it was pre-pandemic. Maybe for you it was especially during the pandemic because it exposed you to new and different needs and realities. But have you ever had one of those days where you just go, 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 go? Maybe for you, it's every day. Where you just go, 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 from the moment you switch on your alarm clock until the end of the day. There's a new program on Netflix called Jiva. It's features uh, set in South Africa and features a young girl in KwaZulu-Natal. And in the beginning, in the first few episodes, you learn that that is what Ntombi's life is like. She just has to go, go, go every single day. And movies are so great because they do these scenes where it cuts away again and again and again to her reaching over in the morning and slapping her phone as the phone alarm goes off. Do you have your phone, your smartphone is your alarm, and it sits on your nightstand, and it's just that go, go, go sense. Remember last week, Bobby was sharing with us how first thing in the morning, you roll over and check that phone. Last thing at night, you set it down. <laughs> yeah, and we just feel like we go, 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 and the world is moving around us. Sometimes on those days, you don't even have time for lunch. Maybe you just grab a bite for breakfast. We don't have time to take care of the long-term things in our lives, and things tend to stack up behind us. It's almost as if we're being pulled in too many directions all at once. You know what those days are like. Well, here we have the apostles, the disciples, and the followers of Jesus having the exact same experience as you and I, maybe just minus the smartphone. They are having an experience where they are being pulled in multiple directions. There is so much need all around them, all the time. The gospel calls them forward. Christ is a go, go, go. There's healing happening on every side. There are people flocking to everywhere where they hear that they are going. And so the apostles are doing all that they can. They are doing all that they can, and they say to Jesus, this is what we have been up to. And Jesus says, come, come, let us go away to a deserted place because we have not even had the leisure to eat. We have not even been able to stop and have lunch. Have you ever had that happen when somebody walks into your office or wherever you happen to be and says, here, eat this apple, eat it now, <laughs> right? When last did you drink a cup of water? We know what that is like. And we are called, friends, in this gospel text, again, to respond like the disciples, like the apostles. Each disciple, you and me, we are called to respond to the good news, to respond to the gospel, to respond to the call of Jesus Christ in each one of our lives. And as we heard Bobby share with the kids, it doesn't matter whether we are yay high or yay high, whether we are bowed over with age and the weight of the world, or whether we are young and strong, it doesn't matter. Christ 
calls each one of us to respond to the gospel, to respond to the good news. But can you already hear, we're not just called to go, 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 go. Someone say amen. We are not just called to go, 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 go. Jesus says to the apostles, come, come, let us go away to a deserted place. Now, he's not talking about isolation like we experienced in the pandemic, right? He's not talking about finding isolation that removes you from connection. This is about nourishment, about feeding our souls. So yes, the church teaches us a valuable lesson, amen? It teaches us to say yes, to give our lives, to be disciples, to engage with our faith on that walk of faith, right? To engage our faith in real ways. And we live that out here at First Church. Someone say amen. We surely do. And yet also the gospel is teaching us and the church should teach us. You can tell me, you can quote it back to me and tell me I said it. The church should also teach us when to say no. Not to isolate ourselves, not to isolate ourselves, but as a way of nourishing ourselves, as a way of nourishing ourselves, amen, as a way of feeding ourselves, sometimes literally, sometimes you need to take a break and eat that apple, sometimes you need to drink more water, but sometimes you also need to just rest, just rest. There is a season for everything, and on this Thank you, Celebration Sunday. We are celebrating the partnership. Maybe some of you have been in a rest season during the pandemic. Maybe some of you have not been teaching church school or not been singing in the choir. Maybe some of you have been able to stay home and clear out those closets, learn a few new recipes, go through some of those boxes that you had stored away. Maybe some of you have been more active than ever before. I know that the teachers among us had a challenging, challenging time this past year and a half. Amen. <laughs> I can see some nodding happening with some of our teachers. I know that for us pastors and those in the life of the church, we had to learn new ways of doing worship. Even the members of the church had to new, learn new ways of connecting online, whether it was to church or some other civic group that you were involved with. So some of us have uh, been active. I know that our food pantry has been sustained by our members and our friends through this pandemic. So today, as we gather for our Thank You Celebration Sunday, we know that we are raising up and celebrating the partnership that we have in ministry. Ministry is always a partnership, as some of us are called to engage and as some of us are called to rest. Because we know that we cannot give what we do not have. We need first to be filled and focused. We need to know that our feet are on the path. But then surely we need to walk that path. We need to surely walk that path. Friends, as we gather today for our celebration, as we gather today to consider how we are responding to the gospel, I want to also draw another distinction. There are some who may be in the room with us or maybe at home who are still young on their journey of faith, who are new to a life in Christ, who are just coming into the church, or who are maybe finding a new way in faith, who are maybe finding a new way to relate to their faith and church tradition. It may be that you are new to this faith tradition, if not to the Christian faith. Then, friends, don't think that this gospel doesn't apply or doesn't have something to say to you. This gospel is not just about the apostles and Jesus. If you look back at the reading that Deanne shared so beautifully, you hear about the response of all those who were in need of healing, all those in that surrounding area who, as they recognized Jesus, which is a response, mind you, as they recognized Jesus, as they listened and heard about Jesus, they stepped out. That is the beginning of the journey of faith, being willing to step out and learn or relearn 
to shift and change, to deconstruct and reconstruct your faith. And then, then we have those of us who have long been on this journey, maybe who have returned to a pew that is familiar, to a room that is familiar here at First Church, those of us who have been a Christian since the cradle, those of us who have been on this journey a long time. Now, to you, this gospel also speaks, because Jesus had been a long time on the road. Jesus had been a long time. Jesus must have been tired. And yet, even when they went across to the other side, even when they went to enter into that leisure time, Jesus saw the need. Jesus saw the need, and did you hear it in the gospel? Took compassion upon them, looked upon them with compassion as sheep without a shepherd, as sheep without a shepherd, and responded, this is the way that we are called to respond even when we have been on this journey a long time. We are called to look with new eyes, with fresh insight, always being willing to see the need that is around us, always being willing to act, to heal, to reach out, to connect with one another. Jeremiah has a word for us, too, about another response we can have in the life of faith, about another response that people take to the gospel message, and that is to scatter the sheep. It is important, friends, that as we respond to the gospel, as we respond to Jesus Christ, we make sure that our actions unify the whole, bring together the body of Christ in nurture, in compassion, in love. We need to be sure that we are not supporting systems or ways of dividing or scattering the sheep because that surely is a response that comes sometimes. We too can make a difference in that regard. We can bring unity by what we do, by what we say. We can bring wholeness, not only to ourselves and the other, but to communities as a whole. And now it's not just about responding to the need. We see Jesus and the apostles responding to the need around them, the need for healing, the need for wholeness in those who are brought to Jesus. It is not just about the sheep that are around us. Responding implies something critical. Responding implies that you believe you have something to give. Responding implies that you have something to give. Do you hear what I'm trying to get at? Responding means that you feel empowered enough on your journey of faith that you can make a difference. Do you know that? Do your actions reflect a belief that you can make a difference because, friends, you surely can. Each and every one of you, I am convinced, if you don't feel that, please let's go for coffee. If you don't know that already, please reach out. Let's talk more because each and every one of us can make a difference. And as we respond, it implies that we know that, that we feel our own worth and that we know we have something to give. That's what worries me the most when sometimes from longtime Christians, even longtime members of our own church, I hear that it's time for others to step up now. Not just I need a time of rest, but it's time for others to step up. Friends, in the life of faith, it is time for us all to step up. Amen? Amen. The world around us needs a response from each and every one of us. Whether it is a season of rest and filling yourself and learning and growing, engaging in faith enrichment classes, studying the Bible, meeting with your pastor, praying, or whether it is that you are actively engaged in service, in fellowship, in connection. Friends, the gospel and the world around us needs a response from each and every one of us 
The time is now for each of us to respond to the gospel call. On this thanks, Thanksgiving and thank you celebration Sunday, each one of us is a partner in ministry. Each one of us, whether you feel like you just happened into this celebration today and it's about all the other people in the room, whether you know that it is about you, friends, it is. The very fact that you are here today, whether in the room or online, the fact that you are watching this service at any point in time means that you, you, you are a disciple. You have something to give. You have something to offer. Friends, it might be a go-go gospel, but be careful of implying what it means to be a part of the church community. It is a go-go gospel in that we are all called to respond. We are all called to act. And yet we are called to act in different ways. Now outside today, we're going to have a perfect practice ground. It's beautiful. It has a bouncy house on the one side. It has lots of chairs and tables with little pop-up tents. You're getting the picture here, right? Now some of you are longtime members of this church. You know each other. You've seen each other for many, many years, but maybe not for many, many months. And so there's going to be reunion and celebration. Those are easy connections to make, easy sheep to gather together and baa at one another, right? I'm going to join in some of that. But here's the thing. We have another way to practice. We're going to have little sheep running around on the bouncy house. How's about learning some of those names, checking in? How was the pandemic for you? How's your summer going? Young or old, we are called into connection to grow and know one another, to learn each other's names. Maybe you'll see someone sitting on their own. Or maybe if you're sitting on your own, you might assume that you're the only person who doesn't know anyone else, right? Ever had that happen at an event? Amen? You think I stand up here and I'm so extroverted? I actually crumble inside at social events. Did you know that? Yeah, I walk into a room full of people, and if you don't tell me what to do, like I'm meant to be up here speaking, I don't know what to do, and it all falls apart. So you know what I'm talking about when you're unsure and you think you're the only person who feels that way. You think you're the only person who's new, the only person who's on the outside. Well, you're not. You're not. You're not, because guess what, friends? Everyone is new at church every single Sunday. Everyone is the same at church every single Sunday because the body of Christ reconstitutes itself. The church makes itself over and over and over again every time the believers gather. So every time is a new practice ground. Every time is a new opportunity, and we're going to have one right after this service to be partners in ministry together as we celebrate one another, as we get to know one another, as we reconnect with one another. Someone say amen. Amen. Amen, amen Gerald.
friends, our lives are continually blessed. And we have the opportunity in the church, we practice on a regular basis the act of giving so that we recognize that all that we have is a gift from God. We give our treasure and you are invited to support the ministries and the missions of this church, but we also give our time and our talent to this endeavor. And so today on our thank you celebration, we are going to raise up and celebrate all of those who have served in this last season, who have gotten us through the pandemic. Invariably, we will forget someone. I'm sure that there are some folks still at home, some folk who couldn't be with us in person. But we want to do the best we can to acknowledge this, to recognize that this year has been beep. Because we aren't one of those churches where I have tattoos and I can just like, let loose, right? Okay, so you all know what I just said, right? Yes, amen, amen. You know what this last year was like. You just lived it, right? And we want, in a way, to celebrate, but honestly, we're also recognizing the pain that has been underneath that. I walked in with one of our members who was saying, this is amazing to see the meeting house again, to be in this space to see one another, to be together. And so we lift that up as a celebration and a joy, knowing that sometimes our greatest celebrations are because we know the pain that has been underneath. And so friends, this day I want to recognize those who have supported the church in various ways, in categories, and I'm going to ask people to stand up, but we're going to hold our applause, and then if you don't mind, we'll just do one all clap at the end, if that's okay, otherwise we'll be, uh, you know... The garden will be, be waiting on us. So there are a few things that I'm going to highlight individual people for, because I want to make sure that we're aware of some of the invisible things that go on, some of the things that are not as obvious to us on a Sunday morning at a worship service. So I want to note that Karen Bruno has been spending hours at the church, hours upon hours, carrying on the work that Kelly Ramirez began. Up in our archive, they pulled the entire archive out of the room and sorted through things that had been just stored in boxes, like decades worth of photographs just stacked in boxes, like decades, actually not even decades, right? We're 100 and how many years old? 184. So 185 now years of blueprints that had just been stacked up and not sorted out, not organized. They have gone through with meticulous care our archives. Who knew that our congregational life ministries included our archives? And then we've had our membership board active in the background, working hard to sustain our congregational life. Our care team has been active, sustaining our common life. Our parish nurses, Judy and Terry, have been active sustaining us online, making phone calls, sending out flowers and care packages. Our prayer blankets who just started back up. Do you know that we were still making some prayer blankets during the pandemic? It happened in a diffuse way out of houses. But people were still in hospital, in pain, in need. And those prayer blankets got out as we were able. And then our worship. We have all of our singers who sustained us, who we feel like we never skipped a beat. We got to see them online every week. AJ and Tim and Nick, who are here with us today, and Stephanie, Kelly, and then our worship musicians, Julie and Dave, of course, who are off on their 40-year 40, 40 wedding anniversary vacation trip to Hawaii, who can't be with us today. But we have Sarah with us. Thank you, Sarah, for representing the organ music that has continued to suffice our worship experience each week, and Dave and Brian and Mike, who have sustained our morning service. We are so blessed by those who have lifted up the worship experience. And I want to highlight the other staff in that list, Alex and Jake, who sit at the back of the room, who are not often seen doing AV, and who support us. Those who are um, also uh, not with us in the person of uh, Antigone, who supported us through the pandemic, who's been with us and is now 
doing her clinical pastoral education. And then, of course, our acting associate minister, Bobby, who's just joined us recently but is here. And then, of course, we've got to recognize our choirs, our choirs who somehow managed to pull off good music in the middle of a pandemic with the help of the technology of meshing them together on the screen. Wasn't that a beautiful experience? So our handbell choir players who sustained through this whole time, meeting every week, maybe not to play, but to maintain fellowship and spiritual connection. And of course, our chancel choir members too. We are so grateful. Did you know that every time you've seen um, us online tearing the bread on a Sunday morning, it's baked by Paula Spate. She brings two loaves by just for us to tear apart. She doesn't ever say, hey, I baked that bread, so you better be doing something with it afterwards. I will tell you that whoever touches it gets to take it home and eat it with cheese and jam. Jesus is good, people. Jesus is good in so many ways. I don't mean that trivially. I know it's a, I know it's a joke and a play on the communion bread, but I mean it deeply because Jesus is present to us in this community in the commitment of people who never ask for a word of thanks. We never ask for a word of thanks, but give. And then, of course, uh, in our congregational life ministries, we also have those who came out on a work day to work outside in these front beds to put that edging in. Jake, how many times did that take you coming down? And those folk who came out in the hot sun to pull weeds, the Goddards came, Ann Snyder came, Liza Selchek came. We all weeded and gardened and and did great things outside in the front beds to keep the church looking beautiful, to keep this congregation alive and representing itself so well. And so then, moving along, we have our community development ministries. That is another vision priority of the church. And we have the folk who stood outside in the freezing cold and gathered coats, and the folk who drove in with their donations in the middle of a pandemic, we made sure that those coats, Maggie, we're carrying it on. We made sure, Nancy and Tiffany and Tanya and Laura made sure those coats got down there. Got down to the school at Mason CLC to those families. We made sure that the gloves and the mittens and, oh my goodness, did you know, some of you, you, you knitted hats that went with mittens that made a whole ensemble, and you went out and bought a jacket that would match up just nicely for a 12-year-old girl. You got things with sparkles on them. You just, oh, you're amazing. And I can't even remember the number of coats we gave, but it was overwhelming. It was overwhelming. You're driving in the parking lot, just dropping off those coats and those mittens and those hats. Fantastic. Each month we've had our mission of the month through the whole pandemic time, raising up a mission and giving funds and support to those organizations that were otherwise crumbling, stretched, I want to tell you, as funding fell away as they went into crisis over the pandemic. And did you know Debbie Riley has continued in the kitchen, even though she wasn't cooking for us, she continued to support a, a, a female-owned business, Smyrna Mediterranean Eats, Huri, continued to cook in our kitchen, and Deb supported her all this while. Having to change to meet the needs of the pandemic, amazing work happening in the kitchen, despite our being out of the building and not knowing. We had community conversations that Margaret Maher and Michael Howard organized online last fall to stir up a response to the issues here in our local area as were happening around us in the nation. We had conversations on race. We got together online last summer and last fall to talk more deeply, to explore, to learn, and to grow. And UDS has just started back up. United Disability Service is back in the building. And some of the volunteers with UDS didn't want to come back to UDS at all until they could come back to First Church because they are part of our family, part of your family. And it has been a good week to have them back. It has been wonderful to reconnect with those folk. And then as we celebrate our administrative ministries, I want to raise up a member who comes by here at least once a week. 
A member who comes by and does whatever is asked. Sits and folds and pastes, Jay Hoshi. Sits and sticks those uh, envelope stamps on. Every single time you get a mailing label that has your name and a stamp on it, Jay Hershey did that with love and care so that we can be the church and communicate in the midst of a pandemic. And then, of course, we have our administrative boards, our stewardship and finance, our buildings and grants, our nominating, our governing board have all kept this congregation running. Our church officers, I would like to recognize and name our church officers who have sustained us through this time. And you know what? As important as they are, it would all not work if we didn't have members who were willing to come out and count the change. Every Monday morning, there are folk who come down to the church. They wake up and drag themselves out, whether there's a pandemic or not. And they come in just to count, just to count every single week. I think that's amazing, don't you? Incredible. We have folk who have to come down and sign the checks. Did you know it gets as rudimentary as that? Because we're a congregational tradition. It's the congregation's money. And so I celebrate our administrative ministries. And then our final grouping, our food justice ministries. I want to lift up and celebrate the volunteers who have sustained our food pantry that allowed us to keep the doors open every single week so that we could serve families in need through our food pantry. And now, again, we are able to add to that this summer, as we were last summer, the food that rolls in from our Feed My Sheep garden, where Sam and Dwayne and Jamie work tirelessly to sustain the garden that you will see in a little while. And they are supported by volunteers, by members of the congregation. Judy Nicely is with us today, and she volunteers in the garden. And I know there are some others as well who have started volunteering. Sarah uh, uh, and Samara, I think, have been in the garden, and maybe some of you who I'm not seeing. So um, that is a wonderful ministry where we grow organic vegetables to distribute in the food deserts of Akron. What a ministry. And our food justice ministry doesn't just stay there. We also have uh, the blessing of our um, food pantry that is growing. And during the pandemic, it's been a difficult time because we know that people felt nervous about coming out. They got some stimulus checks and things kept shifting and changing in the way we had to distribute the food to be safe. It was a challenging time, but the growth in the food pantry has happened in remarkable ways. We've built new infrastructure. We have a new space that has been allotted to the food pantry right before the pandemic. And so we're living into that space, deepening and growing that ministry. And that just doesn't happen by chance. It has got to be sustained. And so I want to lift up in particular the leadership of two folk, Clay and Deb Canfield, shortly after they got to the church, and I mean really shortly after they got to the church. This isn't a warning to anyone else who's new to us, but they got roped into the food pantry. God just worked in an amazing way. And I don't know, maybe they were foolish and they said yes when they were go, 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 and they should have been no, no, no. But uh, I, I don't know. You, you, I think, have been blessed through this ministry, and I pray you have because you certainly have been a blessing to the church, Clay and Deb. And I want to lift up the years that you have now served and also the fact that it might be invisible to others. It wasn't just Tuesday morning distribution. I got to see, because my study is right along that corridor, the hours that you spent tending and caring for that ministry so that it was able to dig even deeper roots. It was able to take even deeper uh, root and, and flourish now as we come out of the pandemic into this new season. So your leadership is valuable and so appreciated the gifts you gave. And we have a small token of appreciation for you that Sue is going to give. And I know you don't like to be up front, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to come on up. Um, and uh, Sue's going to give you a token of, of our appreciation. Clay and Deb asked for nothing lavish because they would like uh, us to make a donation to that ministry um, in lieu of a gift. So we'll be doing that, but we wanted to share just something small, and I believe it's pretty hard to kill, so you should be good.
And Sue is representing the new team that has uh, taken over the food pantry. So that's Sue and Larry and Chip and Kelly and Laura are one team. Do you see how many people it takes to do Clay and Deb's job? Unbelievable growth there. So thank you all. And so now I'm going to ask that uh, we, we are simultaneously going to be clapping for others and clapping for, uh, for ourselves at the same time. But I'm going to ask that anyone who's been involved in any of the things I mentioned and any of the ones I missed and left out might stand so that we can acknowledge you and we can acknowledge one another as we celebrate together. Please, would you stand so that you might be recognized? Friends, as we consider the way in which, ways in which each one of us is called to respond, I would ask that uh, our members reaffirm their covenant with one another as we regather as a church community on this Sunday. In the presence of God and this congregation, we enter into covenant with one first congregational church of Akron. I proclaim my intent to be a faithful member of this congregation, giving of myself, believing and trusting in the Spirit of Christ. I commit to be a disciple of Christ and to show his love. I will actively serve Christ's church wherever I may be, with grace, joy, and enthusiasm. Amen. Friends, from far and near, we have been brought close to one another in the heart of God. As you wander forth into the world, remember that God dwells with you. Go out to seek your neighbor in love, inviting everyone to the feast of love, joy, and celebration. Amen. Thank you. 
Thank you for joining with us in worship. If you have been blessed by any part of this service, I hope that you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel, that you'll tag this service and share it with someone you know who is in need of a blessing or whose life might be enriched by sharing this experience with us. I hope too that you'll visit our website, akronfcc.org, or follow us on social media. If this is your first time with us, or whether you are already a part of this community, you have been a part with us, a part of the body of Christ in this worship experience. And I hope that you will consider getting more and more involved in what God is doing in and through First Church here in downtown Akron, whether you continue to worship with us online or are able to join us in person at some point. Not only do I hope that you are blessed and receive a great deal, but I know that there comes a time when we are called into community so that we can give. Please know that what you are able to give will be a blessing to First Church, whether it is through your time, talent, or treasure. Friends, our worship is now ended. Let our service begin.